Keep underground in an undisclosed location. This is Tread Comics Presents The Fall of Captain Marvel. National Comics Publications vs. Fawcett Publications, Court Records 191, F.2D, 594, was a decision by the United States Courts of Appeal for the Second Circuit in a 12-year legal battle between National Comics, also known as Detective Comics and DC Comics, vs. the Fawcett Comics Division of Fawcett Publications, concerning Fawcett's Captain Marvel character being an infringement on the copyright of National's Superman comic book character. This litigation is notable as one of the longest running legal battles in comic book publishing history. The suit resulted in the destruction of Fawcett Comics and the cancellation of all of its superhero related publications including those featuring Captain Marvel and related characters. In 1970s, National, rebranded as DC Comics, licensed the right to Captain Marvel and revived the character. DC Comics then purchased the rights completely by 1991. Captain Marvel was not the first superhero comic book character, or even the first Fawcett superhero character, to be the subject of a copyright infringement lawsuit. In 1939, Detective Comics and its right-holding sister company, Superman Incorporated, had filed suit against Fox Feature Syndicate for their Superman-like hero, Wonder Man, and filed against Fawcett the following year for their Masterman character. In the case of Masterman, Fawcett simply did as Fox Features had done. They ceased publication of the character and replaced his feature in their Master Comics periodical with a new strip known as Bullet Man. However, Fawcett decided to fight Detective Comics' allegation that Captain Marvel, the star character of their Wiz Comics periodical, was also an illegal copy of Superman. Captain Marvel had proven to be very successful for their company and had, within two years of his existence, become its flagship comic book character and had been the first superhero to have been adapted into film in the adventures of Captain Marvel. By the mid-1940s, Captain Marvel had also become most popular superhero in the country. His Captain Marvel Adventures was the nation's highest circulated comic book magazine, selling 1.4 million copies an issue, and Fawcett had created an entire family of spin-off characters. Captain Marvel Jr., Mary Marvel, Uncle Marvel, and even Hoppy the Marvel Bunny. While its lawsuit against Fawcett was still pending, a few of the elements unique to the Captain Marvel strip found their way into Superman comics, including making Superman fly, Superman's arch-villain Lex Luthor, a bald, mad scientist like Captain Marvel's Dr. Savannah, and introducing the adventures of Superman as a teenager under the title Superboy, after Captain Marvel's teenage sidekick, Captain Marvel Jr., proved popular. Detective Comics tried and failed to both have Fawcett cease publication of Captain Marvel Comics and have Republic Pictures withhold the release of Captain Marvel Serial via a cease and desist in June of 1941. When the action went unheeded, Detective and Superman Inc. filed suit against Fawcett in September of 1941, naming Republic as a co-defendant. The lawsuit between Detective and Fawcett proceeded for seven years before trial, finally beginning in March of 1948. By this time, Detective Comics and Superman Inc. had merged to create one company called National Comics, which became the sole plaintiff in the case. National's argument was that Captain Marvel's main power and characteristics Super strength, super speed, and vulnerability, a skin-tight costume with a cape, and a news reporter alter ego 
were derived directly from those of Superman. Fawcett's counter-argument was that although the two characters were indeed similar, the similarity was not infringing. National presented as evidence a binder over 150 pages in length featuring panels from their comics of Superman performing superheroic stunts juxtapositioned with panels of Captain Marvel doing the same stunts in magazines published at a later date than the Superman example. Also countered suit in two ways. By providing examples of Captain Marvel performing those feats at an even earlier point of publication, or by providing examples of other heroic comic characters such as Popeye or Tarzan performing those feats in earlier published comic strips. Testimony from Fawcett employees and artists hired by Fawcett on a freelance basis offered differing positions on whether or not the Fawcett creative team had been required to copy from Superman comics. The trial was decided in Fawcett's Captain Marvel's favor because of information Fawcett's lawyers had uncovered about Superman's copyright status. The defense lawyers provided evidence that National Comics and the McClure Syndicate failed to copyright several of the Superman newspaper comic strips, and the trial judge decided that National had abandoned its Superman copyright such that it was no longer valid. The trial judge did find, however, that Captain Marvel was an illegal copy of National's Superman. National appealed the decision in 1951 to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit with famed Judge Learned Hand presiding. Judge Hand's ruling in National's favor reversed a part of the trial court's decision. National Superman copyright was held valid, but the McClure strips were not under copyright, and that the finding that Captain Marvel was an infringement of that copyright was affirmed. Judge Hand did not find that the character of Captain Marvel itself was an infringement, but rather that specific stories or super feats could be infringements, and that this would have to be determined in a retrial. He therefore sent the matter back to the lower courts to decide. Instead of trying to appeal the Second Circuit's decision to the Supreme Court or going through the damage assessment on how much of an infringement Captain Marvel was in district court, Fawcett decided to settle with National out of court. Superhero comic sales had decreased dramatically during the early 1950s and Fawcett decided it was not worthwhile to continue fighting National. National agreed to settle with Fawcett out of court, and Fawcett paid National $400,000 in damages and agreed to cease publication of all Captain Marvel-related comics. Fawcett Comics ended up canceling all of its superhero comics selling the reprint rights for Hoppy the Marvel Bunny to Charlton Comics, who relettered the artwork to identify the strip as Hoppy the Magic Bunny. The entire creative staff of the comic book division was laid off, including noted comic book creators such as C.C. Beck and Otto Binder, and the comics division was shut down. L. Miller and Son, a small British publisher of black and white Captain Marvel reprints, adapted Captain Marvel into a derivative superhero, Marvel Man, instead of folding their comic book business. The character enjoyed similar popularity in the 1950s and was rejuvenated in the 1980s, and itself became the subject of a copyright and trademark dispute after the publishers of its North American reprints ceased operation. Captain Marvel remained out of print for the rest of the 1950s and the entirety of the 1960s, a period at which during superhero comics regained their popularity. In 1967, Marvel Comics trademarked a character of the same name for use in 
Marvel Super Heroes issue 12, and a follow-up self-titled series which created some difficulties when DC Comics licensed the right to all of Fawcett's superheroes in 1972 and revived Captain Marvel in a periodical entitled Shazam. They also obtained reprint rights to the original Fawcett comics and began running older stories in their various reprint titles as well as Shazam itself. However, the license agreement required a per-use fee for every appearance by a Fawcett character, which limited DC's willingness to use the characters and resulted most of them appearing very rarely once the Shazam series ended in 1978. In 1987, DC Comics relaunched Captain Marvel in a miniseries entitled Shazam! The New Beginning and purchased the full rights to all of the Fawcett superhero characters by 1991. Captain Marvel has not proven to be a modern day success for DC to the degree that it had been for Fawcett. This is due in part to DC not being able to properly promote the character under the Captain Marvel name, which is now a Marvel Comics trademark. As a result, when DC Comics rebooted its entire comic line under the new 52 initiative in 2011, Captain Marvel was renamed Shazam and was reintroduced to comics the following year under that same name. National Vest Fawcett is still an off-reference case in the areas of copyright law and plagiarism because of its readily accessible subject matter and the popularity of its author, Judge Hand, among legal scholars. It was occasionally nicknamed Kentford Spatson in honor of the hero's alter identity, Clark Kent and Billy Batson. <laughs>